So <clears throat> here I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to call it hello world.js. Um, typically, I like to solve the solve the codes uh, locally. Um, you can just put your code right into the the box here, but it's easier to try it multiple different ways. Um, and we'll add in our tests. I'm just going to change these to console logs. Um, so I want to test that type of greet is a function. And this should log true. And when we call greet, it should return hello world. <laughs> and Dylan loves the new pizza maker. Thank you, Dylan. Um, so I'm going to start up Quokka, which is a tool that will run my code inside the browser. Or sorry, inside of VS Code. It <coughs> Excuse me. And right now it says um, greet equals function false. So greet is not a function. How can we, make, can we make this line of code true? We can write a function called greet. Now, the classic way is to just say function greet like that. And now it is a function, but by default, functions that don't have a return statement return undefined. So that's why we're seeing that right there. Um, and probably the simplest thing to do is to literally just return a string, hello world, like that. Great. Um, but we could go about it other ways. We could put this in a variable if we really wanted to. <laughs> don't die on stream. Oh, thank you. I'm going to take a drink of water. <laughs> um, so let's put it in a var variable called like greeting. So we store it in a variable and then we return the variable. Works the same way. So that's great. Let's actually show it both ways. So we could return it directly. We could put it in a variable. Uh, what else? We could use a function expression. So when you see a function written with uh, the function keyword only, this is known as a function declaration. Um, but you could also use a function expression. And the way a function expression works is by creating a variable and, and assigning it to a function. So I'm going to uh, comment these out. And I'm going to say um, const greet equals a function that then returns uh, hello world, like that. Um, and as you can see, the code still works. <laughs> but uh, this is known as a function expression because this right here is a function um, expression that we're then storing inside of this variable called greet. Um, but in JavaScript, functions are first class citizens, so you can store them in variables. And then later on, you can invoke it because inside of that variable is a function. So um, functionally, these, these two things are the same, pun intended. <laughs> like if we look at these two, they're ultimately doing the same thing. But one thing to note is uh, um, hoisting happens here. So um, if you define a function called greet and you use a function declaration, this function can be called anywhere. So um, I could call greet right here before it's defined, and it still works. Um, I could call it after it's defined, and it still works. Great. But if we use... Um, <laughs> Why are people saying WTF? Hello, everyone. I'll, I'll catch up. Um, why does greet look so weird? Have you ever tried thinking of, uh, of spelling a word too much to where you can't even remember how it's pronounced? Yeah, try the word skeleton. Just type the word skeleton over and over and over again, and uh, it gets really, really hard. You can't recognize it anymore. And hello, Deadly. <laughs> Welcome to the show. <laughs> uh, hello, Checkspace. Uh, if you do exclamation mark VS Code, you'll get a link to all my plugins and settings and such. Hello, Sean. Welcome. Sean's our latest avocado member. Welcome, Sean. Um, the word skeleton. Oh, no, no. Like, literally, skeleton. Skeleton? <laughs> skeleton? <laughs> um, cool. Okay, so what we were talking about. So when you use a function um, declaration, you can call it anywhere. But watch this. So now when we use a function expression assigned to a variable, if we try to, try to call greet right here, well, for one, there's more issues here because we're using const. So it says cannot greet, cannot access greet before initialization. Um, this is a, actually a deeper subject, but this is known as the temporal dead zone. So you can't access const or let variables above where they're defined. Um, but if we used the word var, we're going to get a different error. error. So uh, bonus points in the chat. When I change this to var, what error will we see? What error? Are we gonna, we're not going to see cannot access greet before initialization. What are we going to see if I change this to a var instead of a const? 
You get you get coding garden points if you get it right. And thanks for the follow. Ooh, Mario. Reference error? Can you I mean, don't no. Undefined is not a function. Like you cannot invoke undefined. And we'll we'll talk about why that is. Um, or yeah, or greet is not a function. Though we might actually get a different error, error if we run this with Node.js rather than using uh, Quokka. Um, not a function. Uh, that. Greet is not a function. That's, I feel like um, it might be because we're using Node version 12. No, I'm using Node version 13. Here, I'm going to go way back. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a Node version... Um, not way back. I'll try Node version 8 or something. <laughs> Public void potato, return llama. Thank you, Dylan. <laughs> um, let's do like node version eight. I think the errors got better in version 13. Cause usually it'll say like, uh, cannot invoke undefined or undefined is not a function. Um, now let's try it. Ah, well, maybe not. Maybe not. <laughs> yes, we can see your avatar. Um, NVM, you, oh yeah, we'll go back to 13. Okay, so we know now that it does say greed is not a function. Um, instead of, let's change it to const. We should get the same error in the console. Cannot access greed before initialization. But let's talk about why. So when you use um, a function expression versus a function declaration, um, in JavaScript, all of your variables are hoisted to the top of the scope uh, when the, the function first, uh, or when the, the program first starts up. So basically what happens is every single variable declaration like this gets put up at the top with no value on it, right? Um, so it gets moved up to the top and then the word var, you, it, it just doesn't happen exactly, but you could think, like, think about it like that. So even though you wrote your code like this, at the end of the day, what ends up happening is that gets moved to the top with no value and then um, the value gets assigned here. So if you were to write this code, this makes a little bit more sense because when it reaches this line, it says, uh, I mean, you didn't put a value in greet. And so your, your program is running top down. And so when it gets here, greet is not a function. Then you assign it to a value, which is a function. Um, and our code will never make it there because it breaks right here. But if I comment that out, then it will actually work because you can, because at this point, the greet value has the function inside of it. Um, so. Two different ways to define the function. They have implications. <laughs> uh, and thanks for the follow, Deadly. And good morning, Tenisk. Yeah, it's, this is mostly a family fr family friendly stream. <laughs> um, cool. So there's that. There's that. Now let's talk about arrow functions. So, um, and and actually, arrow functions work very similar to to this. So. Uh, with an arrow function, we can say something like const uh, greet equals an arrow function that returns hello world. Cool. Uh, and this actually has the same implications, right? So we're, we're, we're taking this function right here. We're storing it in a variable. So I can't call it before, um, before, it's, before it's actually initialized with the value. <laughs> the most in-depth hello world I've seen. L like I mentioned, this is going to be more of um, a... Um, uh, we're talking about functions. Um, so it, similar things are happening, but arrow functions, there are more implications that for this problem don't actually matter. But uh, arrow functions don't have a this keyword, regular functions do, things like that. Cool. So we can't call it before, but we can call it after. Um, but there's more things you can do with arrow functions. So if an arrow function um, literally consists of just a single return statement, you can write it on just one line. So you can say const greet equals an arrow function and then just return hello world like that um, and it works in exactly the same way <laughs> so um, and, and again this is because we're using arrow functions so arrow functions have this special thing about them if it's a single statement that is being returned um, you can just put it all on one line and you're good to go um, notice that we don't have the curly braces so if I add curly braces Actually, in the chat, let me know what's going to happen if I add curly braces. <laughs> you put the arrow down. That's funny. <laughs> oh, thank you, Deadly. And Client Telephone says, I'm 100% on board for these types of videos. I appreciate that. I do want to do, like, dedicated function videos with, like, uh, a curriculum and such. Yeah. 
Hello, Annaboth. It's been a while. Welcome. Um, Umhex says it will return undefined. Yes. Yeah. So I mean, it may not. It may not look like it. Uh, yeah. So and Daniel Garden has it too. It returns undefined because there's no return keyword. So if you try to find yourself writing an arrow function on a single line like this, but you do this, um, ultimately you can see it right here. The function returns undefined. Uh, and really, it's because it's like you wrote it like this. And remember, if you don't have a return keyword. Um, it's kind of just like your function says return undefined, like that. Uh, I mean, you don't have to put that. That's what just happens by default. It's like you literally just put a string and, and didn't do anything with it. So uh, you have to be careful with your arrow functions. Make sure you leave the curly braces off. It gets a little bit more confusing if you're trying to create uh, an arrow function that returns an object on a single line because those are curly braces. but. We're not. We're gonna. Not gonna talk about that now. Yeah, Daniel Gordon says I made that mistake many times in my code. <laughs> um, uh, definitely, definitely. Sometimes since I last joined, Pepe hands as I'm working now. Uh, I don't have much time to watch the streams live. Is this a um, a Franker face um, emote? Because we do have better Twitch TV emotes working. I thought we might. We might get that working tonight. Frankerface, I need to, yeah, I need to get the global Frankerface emotes. But no worries, thanks for thanks for dropping by. <laughs> um, okay, yeah. So I mean, lots of different ways to write the function. Um, for this for this problem, <laughs> I would probably write it like this. <laughs> what the heck is the word we're trying to guess? Should I start up my bot? Um, let's look at it. Word garden. And thanks for the follow, uh, Rublev. Oh, I know what it is. Uh, Chat Translator does a lot of different languages. It was actually developed by uh, Instafluff. Um, but if you go to the Chat Translator channel, you can see all of the languages that it supports. I don't think it's gray areas. Back to the pizza maker. <laughs> the, the can English to talk. Irish. Is that Irish? Do you know it now? Grub areas. <laughs> grid areas. Yeah, grid areas. It's like a CSS thing. Cool. Um, okay, so yeah, we did the hello world thing. I think like with modern JavaScript, I would probably write it this way. If we really were just writing a function um, that was returning a string, I would probably write it this way. Uh, but like, as, like, if you're new to JavaScript and new to these arrow functions, it can be weird to see them written in different ways. But I, I would go this route. So I'm going to submit that. That was a fun, fun little chat about <laughs> um, functions and hello world and such. Sample tests. <laughs> 